many years has it been going on? Okay, it'll be March 8th and 9th. That's a Saturday and Sunday. On Saturday, it'll be from 10 to 6, and Sunday from 11 to 5. And okay. it's been 18 years that we have been celebrating this India Fest. It's success year after year. Well, uh, Dr. Shah, what, what is the purpose of India Fest? Main thing is it all started with a small group of people who, who with their children wanted to celebrate the Indian culture and wanted the, their American born children to know their roots and traditions. And uh, then it grew and we got a good response. So basically India Fest is cultural awareness and um, we get the community together and mm -hmm. then whatever proceeds we get, we donate it to local charities. And uh, I understand that uh, you've helped quite a few charities over the years. Maybe you could uh, give us a list of uh, a few of them. Um, yeah, we've done the 9-11 Fund, we've done Boys and Girls Club, Crosswinds, Daily Bread, Early Intervention, the Haiti Earthquake Relief, um, and this year we're doing the Children's Hunger Awareness. Oh, yes, okay. That's yeah, and that's a really, um, it's really close to my heart because I have kids, and what that is, is the opportunity to feed kids that don't have food over the weekend. And they have a backpack that they um, on Friday that's packed for them, and they have food on the weekend. And I think that's just amazing. Yeah, it is. It's surprising and, 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 and somewhat upsetting to, to find ourselves in that state, uh, our community in that state. But I, I know that there are a lot of people now that are either living with relatives or simply camping out in the woods, and uh, they there are a lot of kids that are going hungry. They need help and. This uh, Bob came up with, uh, and the people that work with him is, is a really great idea. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. yes, I think it's fantastic. Now, you know, every year you folks uh, do a great job of putting forward different aspects of India. Uh, what should someone expect to see new and different this year? And, and this question is for both of you, just pick up on different parts of it. Like, well, I understand handicrafts are going to be a Okay, well, things. every year, um, India Fest selects a new and different theme. So we've done, in the past, we've done tourism of India, we've done weddings of India, we've done musical instruments. This year, we decided to do handicrafts of India. There's so much to talk about with India, so you really have to zero in on one aspect to get a good feel of what that's about. So this year, we're doing handicrafts of India. Of India. Mm -hmm. And uh, with handicrafts, we are going to have different stations between, uh, because handicrafts is a very vast subject, and each particular area of India has its own speciality. Right. So this year in a Discover India section, we are going to have different stations where there will be all diff um, there will be a Bandhani station, which is a local tie-dye, mm -hmm. Indian version of tie-dye, right. and then there's going to be image inlay and other various things. Mm -hmm. So um, also in youth involvement section, we are going to have hands-on activity for children that they mm -hmm. can touch and feel and experience. So that we'll have a chance to work with that. And, and in the second part of this uh, show, we're going to meet two young ladies who are yes. actually crafts people themselves and working on the various things that uh, we've been talking yes. about. But yes. it's, the, it, the thing is, I think Americans need to keep in perspective, because when you look at a globe, you know, you see India on this side, America on this side. If you were to take India and you were to superimpose it on top of a continental United States, it would take up about half the area. Mm -hmm. So we're having like a really big country. They don't right. have the subcontinent for nothing. You know? right. I mean, it's just, mm -hmm. um, right. it's an amazing, um, I read there's something like 50, 50 separate languages? Yes, yes. Or somewhere around there? Yes, you know? there is. Yes, there is. and each state has its own language and mm -hmm. its own culture. So, But it's amazing how everything comes together. It's unity and diversity. Yes. Yeah, India Fest does the thing of bridging India with the U.S. And just bringing just peace, you know, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. educating everybody in the community about what we do and how we do it and letting them experience mm -hmm. that on that weekend. Yeah, and, and, and that's one of the things that I have always enjoyed in the past is this general sense of being welcome. Yes. yes. Okay. And no question, no matter how dumb I might ask, uh, is always met with a smile and a general uh, explanation about where I might be wrong or what what I need to know, that sort of thing, you know? Like, I always assume all Indian food is hot, 
curry oh, and super, super, yes. super hot stuff, you know? Um, no, India has a lot of spices. So spices aren't necessarily um, heat. It's not, it's not like spicy to the tongue. It's just a variety of different spices that we use. It's the flavor. It's the flavor. It's the flavor. Yeah. You can get yeah. spicy for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that I have discovered too. <laughs> a little bit away from our set questions here. Let's see. Um, oh, this is actually a good question because you put on a really big show here. Uh, when do you start planning the festival and, and how many people come together to make it happen? Unbelievably, we plan year-round for this event, uh, but we actually do our core committees in September. But we have at least 300 volunteers that come together for that weekend. But we have core committees such as Discover India and the youth involvement and that really plan, I would say, six months, in like advance. really hard in advance. Yeah. But the thoughts are going year-round about what theme we should do and how we should incorporate. That's really year-round. And the sponsorship committee, because we have very generous sponsors who yes. help us to make this event very successful. And we have raffle, mm -hmm. the, the raffle donors. And then for a very reasonable price, we... Um, sell raffle tickets to win those fabulous prizes. Last oh, year we had a cruise and then there was a better You guys do get some the very best prizes and, that, and that's a, a fact, you know. And, and when you mention the sponsors, of, you know, uh, you have this wonderful website and if people want to know who's out there supporting you, I encourage them to go to the website and find out as well. Yes, yes. www.indiafestbrillard.org. That's our website. So uh, what, was, what were the prizes this year? You said there was a, a cruise coming up? Or? This year we're or going to be auctioning off some jewelry. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, raffling, sorry. We oh, have to be sorry. raffling some jewelry. Uh -huh. Yes. And the prices of the tickets are twenty dollars a piece, but mm -hmm. it's a diamond solitaire. Two two diamond rings, right. solitaire, worth one thousand five hundred dollars, and another one is five hundred and fifty. Yes. Yes. And you pay only twenty dollars a ticket. We you have know? the most amazing sponsor. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you know, another thing, um, how do you come up with a theme for the India Fest? Every year after the India Fest is done, the committee meets and we take suggestions from all the committee members, community leaders, sponsors, and then all suggestions are taken and then they take a vote and then they decide the theme. Now, I want to go back a step or two because I got us leading in toward uh, the crafts and that sort of thing, but in terms of the structure of the festival itself, You'll have a series of certain events occurring, like there'll be music, a fashion show. Yes. Let's go over those items as well. Yeah, we have a fabulous stage show. See, basically, we want to have fun while educating and getting the community together. So the fun part is the stage show. Stage show preparation starts six months in advance, like yes. Angela said. Yes. And all the whole community comes together. Children of all ages get to participate. And that's where and we get parents our too. Yeah, and adults too. And what happens is, through stage entertainment, children learn uh, uh, different traditional dances, yes. traditions, um, more than Bollywood dances too. Bollywood is very popular nowadays. So, and they get to experience all the different um, traditional attire that they get to wear and all the colors. And, you know, normally you don't wear Indian clothes to school, but they get to experience all these beautiful dresses and you know a lot of us go and get them from local Indian stores or go to yeah. India and, and then the diversity of dress too. Yeah, it isn't just about sorry. So no, 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 no. No. Again a very, very large country with all different types of hate to use or costumes but national costumes if you will uh, to the region. Yes. And it is not only ladies' fashion, men's fashion is very popular yes. too. Which oh, reminds yeah. me, you're having a fashion show here, are you? Yes. Not? Yes, yes, it's a highlight of our stage production, actually. Yes, it's the highlight of the show. So it's like the grand finale of the day. Now, we also feed people. <laughs> our so food was next on the list. <laughs> yeah. You know, as I drove to talk food, we were all over the Yeah, now, maybe I should have grabbed something before I came in. <laughs> we have um, many different varieties of food available for everyone's palate. And it doesn't have to be spicy, and it, and it doesn't have to be savory. It can be sweet, so or you can do both. You can or cold. Uh, yes, or cold. cold. Yes. Yeah, because uh, like uh, I remember cold what, was, that, what is that cucumber soup thing uh, you make? Uh, right up. Right up. Right up. Yeah, that's right up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just you know, it's the opposite of what you know your stereotypical uh, 
hot and spicy Indian food you think of, you know? But that's just coming from a, a general point of view, you know? It's healthy too. It's healthy also. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 It's yes. healthy, low calorie. Um, that reminds me, we also have a live cooking demo. Yes, in our culinary booth. And that gives people an opportunity to come watch um, volunteers cook and explain and uh, see how it's done and talk about the spices and they can answer questions and they also get to sample the dishes that they make. Yep. Okay. So it's, it's, you know, come with an open mind, with an open heart. You know, we're coming to the end of uh, our first section here of the show and I'd like you to remind them of the uh, time, dates, and place. March 8th and 9th, and that's Saturday and Sunday. Saturday from 10 to 6 and Sunday from 11 to 5. The Compact Pavilion. We Compact Pavilion. Right, and that's right next to the no, no, Eastern State, State College. Yes, Eastern Florida State College. Eastern State College. Yes. Hey, we'll be right back. Hey, Sam, come celebrate the unique cultural experiences of India, all in your own backyard. The light and the distinctive traditions of the foods and flavors, music and dance, clothing and fashion, even arts and crafts of the vast diverse regions of India at this year's India Fest. Good evening and welcome back to Bavard Notes. Now tonight we're talking about India Fest and for the second part of the program. I have two brave volunteers. We have Nina Reddy and Ami Azar, and uh, they are going to uh, show us a little bit about some of the Indian crafts that they uh, are specializing in. Now, there are so many we can't really go over all of it, but both of you have picked an individual one. Uh, to start with, Nina, tell us about the one that you chose. So I chose the Indian art of Bandhani, and Bandhani is Indian tie-dye, and it's really similar to our American tie-dye. It's basically done where you take the fabric, you make little dot, like you make little knots right. in the pattern, and then you untie it, and you end up, after you dye it, unknot it, and you'll end up with beautiful patterns like this one. And as you can see on this one, that each one of these white squares is a result of the knot. Okay, you know, this is amazing, because, you know, I'm, I'm used to the uh, old hippie style American tie-dye with big giant knots, and then, but here, each, how did you do that? <laughs> That's amazing. So many little tiny knots. And there's lots of different patterns, there's, they can be like stripes and squares and circles, and they can go from intricate to really simple, like this one. And, you know, I believe you have brought several examples mm -hmm. in. Uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at the next one, and you can give us some... Oh, my goodness. So this one is a Bondani skirt, and red and black are actually common colors used in Bondani. You usually see these. And colors in Bondani are usually natural, which means they're not light. And for examples of the colors would be blue, red, black, and even green. It's just a little extra flash there. Mm -hmm. okay. Like I said, they can be simple and intricate. And it's all based on the occasion, too. Like some are made for weddings and some are just made for simple, like, party. Okay. And um, in terms of how labor intensive it is, is it, does it take, well, uh, just to guess, uh, how much time would go into something as beautiful as this? It takes a long time because drying itself takes about a week at least. And like knotting takes about another week. So I, I say the total process takes almost like a month at least. And this one, you can see how the colors are very vibrant, organic mm -hmm. colors. And so organic colors, like they would use like indigo or sunflower petals to get that natural organic Colors. From the plant sources. Like so, the dyes from the plants. So you, you, you shy away from the synthetic dyes and you concentrate on just the natural types. And you can see Ooh. here, this is hand sewn embroidery. It's very vibrant, beautiful. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if we can pick up the details. Well, here, I'm, okay, that's good. And um, just 
really that's that's fantastic nice work uh, and was there a next one that we have or, or one, I more. Mean, one more okay and this one is a wedding bonzoni skirt because it's very heavy and there's a lot of detail on the bottom here lots of patterns and embellishments like little mares very intricate pattern yes very heavy hmm. it's really fascinating work and, and I understand you yourself you're, you're interested in the arts uh, as a student mm -hmm. and, and do you intend to pursue it more yes I do like I think bombing is really cool and but I like how it's similar to American tie-dye I think it's really cool how like this is actually originated like 5,000 years ago, and it's the oldest tie-dyeing technique practiced to still today. Wow. All that way back then. Mm -hmm. Well, that was an excellent presentation, and uh, if people uh, are coming to India Fest, I believe you're going to be at one of the booths, and are you actually going through the process, showing them how it's tied off, or are you well, just... No. We're going to go out oh. and have them tied, and then we're going to like show them how they... like. Like, they're already tied, we're going to be dipping them in the dye and unwrapping them to show them oh, the pattern. Oh, okay. So, that sounds like it'd be a really great experience to find out how you were able to achieve such intricate detail on that work. Mm -hmm. Now, let's, let's bring it over to Ami Azar. And you're into the painting of these little tray-like things. What, what, what am I looking at here? It's actually an Indian via. It's like... A candle holder, but you put a little oil wick in there, and you light it, and it reflects off of the sequins, and it looks very pretty. And they usually use it during Diwali to light up the house. Okay, and the oil, um, I understand it's actually uh, a type of butter? Yes, it's clarified butter. So, like, you take unsalted butter, and you mm -hmm. melt it down, and then after that, it makes the substance called ghee, and then you can dip the cotton wicks into the ghee. And the ghee, I, I take it from what you said earlier, is, is, is very uh, trans, transparent, so uh, the light shines through and, and say it goes against the, the metallic highlights there that, that reflect back, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, it looks very pretty. So, um, show me how you do this. Okay, so first, you take a three inch clay saucer that you can get at like any arts and crafts store, and you just go ahead and and you actually do two coats of paint. And you pick very bright colors because in India they use bright colors. So I chose red and yellow and blue for my color. Okay. And so when you paint it, you have to make sure to do two coats because you don't want any of the clay showing through. You want it to be just the color you chose. Mm -hmm. And tilt it ever so much like in this direction. There. Yeah. The camera can pick up on your brush techniques and it shows. As we're going in nice and tight there, let's see how you're doing with that. So you're laying down that first coat, you want a, a, a nice smooth one, right? Uh, yes, very smooth. Otherwise, when you try to put on all the extra details, it won't look as nice. And, and this is what I guess we might call the base coat. Uh, it, yes. It, it gets in there nice and thick, because you're going to put the other paint on top of that, right? Yes. So you have to let it dry. It takes mm -hmm. about five minutes to let the paint dry since it's glossy acrylic paint. But it looks like you pre-prepared one here. Yes, so this is one that's already been painted. You can see the two coats of the blue on the inside and the two coats of the red on the outside. Mm -hmm. Double coat then, right? And so then what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw an intricate design in the middle. Usually uh -huh. the designs are flowers or peacocks or paisleys because those are the traditional Indian designs. So mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and start drawing a flower in here. And... I picked a very bright color for it because it really shows on the blue and it looks very pretty at night. Now the, the, uh, the various designs that you're using, they are basically to, to, to reflect the spirit of the, the festival, right? The, I believe the festival of light? Yes, Diwali is actually the festival of light. And um, at night you go around and you put these candles all over your house and you're trying to invite in the good spirits for the new year. And so it's very festive, but you can not only use them for Diwali, you can use them for any special occasion. Right. You know, I have that for just a second here. And I'm going to uh, tilt it so my cameraman may be able to get a, a fairly good shot of the very elegant, very simple design. Oops, 
little shine there, let me tilt it. And it represents, you know, like I say, it's, it's a, a floral pattern. So it's, it's very nice. And, you know, we uh, have quite a few here that we've done under less uh, pressure, uh, you know, and more detail. You know, uh, I will do my best not to put a glare on the camera, but there we go. There's one. And I will see through a couple of these here. And I, I noticed that uh, we you also like to do a little metallic highlights there. Yes, the glitter and the sequins tend to look very pretty when the light shines on them. So. Oh, this one, uh, this is a, I, I like this one, it's very nice. Thank you. It has a very powerful solar type theme there. But, uh, and besides being works of art, uh, in many places in India, this is your, oh my goodness, we're coming right up on the end. Hey folks, what I guess what I was trying to say here is a lot of places in India where they don't have electricity, this is a light. <laughs> well, ladies, thank you both for coming in. I, I hope you're going to be, well, obviously you're both going to be at the festival. I encourage folks to come to India Fest, and you will go ahead and uh, get a chance to find these two ladies working at the festival, explaining uh, these various different types of crafts. And there are more than just two crafts out there as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got quite a few youth volunteers. And you know, it's young people like you that help it make the festival go well. You know, because uh, I think other young people will be very comfortable s sitting with you and learning the techniques and finding out more. So again, thank you both for coming in tonight. experiences of India, all in your own backyard. Delight in the distinctive traditions of the fruits and flavors, music and dance, clothing and fashion, even arts and crafts of the vast diverse regions of India at this year's India Fest. Mm -hmm.